Good evening and welcome to The Jury, the show where you, the people of Australia, sit in judgment on the issues confronting the nation. Coming up on tonight's show, Albo is coming after the car you drive. That's right, the Aussie Ute is in the PM's firing line as Labor's electric vehicle crusade sets its sights on reducing climate emissions. Calls for Chinese-owned app TikTok to be banned over national security concerns, but the PM's not budging. Barnaby Joyce will fire up on why he thinks we are too soft on China. Meanwhile, with youth crime at crisis levels, we ask, should parents be held responsible for the crimes of their children? This week, a Labor visa bungle saw arrested immigration detainees walk free. Are our borders weaker under Labor? Plus, that now infamous photo of Princess Kate. There they are, this week's jury, ready to weigh up the arguments and deliver their verdict. Before they do, we'll hear from expert witnesses and some of your favourite Sky News contributors. The courtroom is now in session. Let's get into it. Sky News Australia presents The Jury with Danica DiGiorgio. Well, the next federal election is shaping up to be a ute tax election as the fight over Labor's emission reduction plan for cars and utes shifts into top gear. Manufacturers will face fines unless they lower the carbon intensity of their fleets by more than 60% by the end of the decade. It's been touted as Labor's great climate change market intervention, though the PM insists petrol cars are not being banned. The Federal Chamber of Automotive Industries warns the proposed emission standard will push up the price of popular models like the Ford Raptor by $6,000 and some other models by $25,000. Already, Australia's three most popular vehicles sold in 2023 all emit 194 grams of carbon per kilometre on average, meaning the Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux and Isuzu D-Max are under threat under Albo and Bowen's blueprint. Our first question for the jury is... Is the government trying to kill off youths? Joining us now is Liberal Senator Holly Hughes, former Assistant Shadow Minister for Climate Change and Energy, plus Tim Buckley, Director of Climate Energy Finance. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us on the panel. Holly, we'll start with you. Is the great Aussie Ute about to become a thing of the past? This is an absolute tax grab by this government. I mean, yet again, we see Casanova Bowen mm. racing racing too hard and too fast here in a bid to chase this emissions target that he's consistently just setting for himself. Uh, it's six years that we're looking till they want this 60% standard uh, to be put into place. It is going to push up the cost. Australia itself is a very unique market, yet Bowen seems to have no comprehension of this. We've got a generation of kids who apparently have climate change anxiety. What Bowen is doing is setting up the Australian family and the Australian tradie to go into range anxiety. We know that there's not enough options when it comes to charging, but we also know that there are not enough options when it comes to SUVs and utes uh, in these electric vehicles. They just simply don't exist. The few that do exist are left-hand drive, and cost over $100,000. Wow. So what does this mean? It means that Australian tradies and Australian families are going to keep what they've got for longer. That's going to lead to higher emissions. And it is absolutely a bid to tax the ute out of existence. I mean, this is a, quite a big plan by the government, Tim, that's been handed down. I mean, surely you've got to concede they're coming after the ute. I absolutely categorically reject that uh, conclusion. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I mean, we've had an absolute misinformation campaign from the opposition, the federal opposition, and uh, unfortunately tonight we've just heard that yet again, that uh, it's a tax. There is no tax involved. It is not a new tax. We've had ABC Fact Check and ABC Checkmate categorically say that there is no new tax and that the statements of the LOP are categorically wrong. Uh, there are a number of reasons why this is very, very sensible strategy to drag Australia into the current century. Mm -hmm. Our emission standards are some of the worst in the world. India, China, Europe, America all have emission standards. Mm -hmm. 
It's about time Australia joined the rest, 85% of the rest of the world, and actually have some standards, some emissions controls on our vehicles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So apart from the misinformation campaign, to me, electric vehicles are brilliant. We import in Australia $60 billion a year of oil and diesel. That is a massive energy security risk for our country. It's a massive economic headwind for our economy. And so to me, I'd much rather use domestic, cheap and clean energy to, to fuel our vehicles. Does he raise a good point here that we, we risk being left behind if we don't go down this pathway, Holly? Absolutely not. And I, I mean, it's good to see, Tim, you reading the Labor talking points on this fuel efficiency standard. The Coalition's actually not opposed to a fuel efficiency standard. We are opposed to what Bowen is trying to introduce because, again, it's too fast, it's too hard, too and we fast. don't have the infrastructure. 85% of the world already we has standards. Yeah, the not laggard, this harsh. Not and 4,000 dealers we, in the US, over 50 states, have just written to Biden and said, you've got to put the handbrake on this. We are yeah. not those markets. China emits 29% of the world emissions. We emit 1%. Of our emissions, transport is 19%, cars are 45%. It is a minuscule amount of our emissions on the global stage, yet we are going to be punished. We have a completely different environment mm -hmm. to any of those countries that we're being compared to in the distances that we drive and the way that the Australian economy operates. Greater it is fuel an absolute efficiency standards furphy, will benefit an absolute Country, that this users. is a cost of living measure. Okay. It is going but to cost Australians more. Yeah. Every single one of these cars, there aren't enough charges. The infrastructure yeah. is 60,000 to 100,000 per fast yes. charger. Yeah. They do not exist yet. No one is saying we are not going to ultimately get there. We are not going to get there at the pace well, Bowen wants us Tim, to. Tim, I mean, you talk about the regions, um, yep. but if we look at farmers, for example, they particularly rely on utes. And as I mentioned in the introduction, Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux, Isuzu D-Max, they're all, all under threat because of this new policy. This the not... farmers in particular, the tradies, what about them? Do you think that that is going to have an impact? They're not under threat because what this will do is encourage the supply of new vehicles into Australia. Mm -hmm. All of those vehicles will still be available mm -hmm. and it'll be about increasing the range, the alternative okay. choices that consumers okay. have. I mean, basic right, well, economics wanna... tells you that's wrong. We are 1% of the global car market. We are a right-hand market. We are a small market. Isuzu does not have a vehicle that it can put in place. Okay. And it's not the coalition putting out any misinformation. It is all of the automotive industry groups. Let's, let's go and to the, the only two that have left, Tesla and Polestar, because they're going to make all the money from the new tax when they're having to buy the credit. Let's go to the jury. Uh, Grant in the back row. What do you think about this? Do you think the government's trying to kill off you? When the market is not doing what the government wants it to do, the government wants to intervene into that. So where you have millions of decisions made by consumers every day to suit their individual circumstance, uh, and then you you uh, defer that to a, a handful of um, bureaucrats making decisions on behalf of millions of people. Mm. You don't get the consumer choice. Mm. You don't get the, uh, um, the needs met by the people who, within that market. Mm. If we're going to be relying on electric vehicles, the question has to come back to um, Australia and Canada are the highest producers of uranium, mm. yet we don't have nuclear energy here. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a whole, yeah, that's a whole yeah. different separate topic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. That's a whole different, <laughs> different matter. This is what we're talking uh, about. No, it's true. Look, it's a good, it's yep. a good one. Uh, Samantha, what about you? Do you think that the government's trying to kill off youths? Uh, I do. I look at it and I think we're going to increase the cost of everything. We have trades who already struggle to get to places on time mm -hmm. to do the jobs in someone's domestic house. But mm -hmm. if you're going to limit the ability for how far they could go, how many jobs are they going to be able to do it a day and then how much are they going to have to charge because they need to make the same amount of money? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I respond to that? Yes, because by all at means. the end of the day, the range anxiety was absolutely... I hear your point. Five years ago, ten years ago, battery technology was last century. It is expanding phenomenally. Last year, 30% of all cars sold in China, 8.1 million cars in China were electric vehicles. China is expanding its share of electric vehicles 10% per annum. Their target is 80 to 90% by the end of this decade. We won't be able to buy internal combustion engines because foreign manufacturers won't be producing them next decade. If we don't start getting ready for it, mm. we'll miss out. We're already the world's laggard and you won't yeah. actually be able to import those vehicles because they won't be well, manufacturing okay. them.